All right, welcome back. So in this one, we are creating the login class, which is this one inside the classes folder. Now the class, this particular class is going to complement the login.php page. So what we are giving, uh, if you notice here, we create a new class and then we call the method called evaluate, which is simply a function inside this class. So which means we have to create this function and it has to give us a result of whether things went well or not. So we can copy a lot from the signup uh, class to avoid typing a lot of things. So if I go back here and go into my classes folder and get the signup.php class, let me open that. Okay, so this is the class right here. So let's get uh, things that we know we are going to need uh, from this. So for example, the create user ID uh, is not required because we are not creating any user ID. So this function is not required. And the create user, we might actually need this. Uh, this is where we will put the information that is required to remember the user, okay? And then we have the evaluate that checks whether the data we have sent is correct or not. So let's copy, uh, let's, let's go back here and let me just create the class in here. Let me just say class login, capital L, like so. And then I'm going to create the function that we need since we've already accepted that this will be our function. So let me come back here and say function evaluates. Open close bracket like that. Okay, so that's the function we need. And I know that we're going to need this error because we might encounter some errors. So I'm going to copy that as well here. Okay. And what else can we salvage from here? So we have the evaluate function and then we have uh, the create user right there. So let me get this one. I'm going to need this, but not the contents per se. So let me just, uh, okay, let me just copy everything. Then I can change things a bit. So I'll come back here and add this function here. Okay. so. Just by simply adding this function here, we have successfully created this method. Is it that method? Yes. So uh, where is this? That evaluate, yes, we've created that one. So create user, we're going to use that as well. Now, what the only thing we are getting here is the email and the password. So everything else can be deleted since we won't be needing to use any of those uh, variables and then we are going to uh, I don't know what this comment is about all right so we create the URL address and the user ID which we don't need to do in this case since the user uh, already created these when creating the account so then we create an actual query so we're going to get back to this query in a bit now we still need to create the DB to access the database and instead of saving, we're supposed to read from this database. So I'm going to say read. Now remember we are using the read here because that's a function that we have in the database class. So let me open this database class just to refresh your memory a little bit. So if we come back here, this is the database class and it has this function called read and it has this function called save. So in this case, we want to read from the database and compare if that user exists in the database. So we'll be accessing this read, which takes in the query. Okay, so I can close that. All right, so we get the user's email, we get the user's password, and we want to check if they're actually somebody with those details. So instead of ins insert into users, we're going to say select or with, with a star from users so this is how you read from a particular table and we have to put a where clause so all this down here must go 
So we're going to say select all from users where, now we're looking for the email. So we're going to say where email is equal to, and then we're going to get this variable right there. So now to protect ourselves from an attack, uh, which we should have done also in the sign up part here, is we're going to add uh, a function called add slashes like that. Now what add slashes does is that it escapes certain strings. So let me give you an example of what escaping is. For example, if I have a variable called A and I want to store data like this, uh, or let's say I want to, uh, I use the single quotes and I say John, John's dad. This is the information I want to save, John's dad, like so. So as you can see, these two parts are colored differently because as far as PHP is concerned, this is one string and it ends there. And then this is not part of any string. And then we have this inverted comma that is not uh, connected to anything. So it doesn't know that this inverted comma here is part of this sentence or this string right here. So just by adding a slash like this, what I have done is escaped this uh, inverted comma. So now PHP will regard this as one string. So this is called escaping a string. So now what happens is you never know what the user is going to type. They might type something like this. And to avoid this confusion, we say add slashes and it's going to look for all these characters, these special characters and add these slashes automatically. So that's what add slashes is for. So we're going to copy that and add it here. Also add slashes re, uh, improves your security because some people can add malicious software using these special characters and you wouldn't know about it. So by doing this, you are securing your website. Okay, so we're going to say where email is equal to the value of this email that the user has given us. So we're going to say paste there. So select all from users all means all the columns from users, which is the table, where email is equal to this email. Now this is a string, remember that. So we have to put uh, single quotes around it like so. So where email is equal to email. And then we're just going to tell it to limit one. So we're telling it to limit to one row, just to return one row. Whichever it is the first one that it finds, it should return that one because there should only be one user with this particular email, okay? So once we do that, we're going to create the new DB class and then read from it, okay? Now this time, since this read returns a result, because this is how we designed it ourselves, so I'm going to say result is equal to, so that I get an actual result. So if I do get a result here, it means this user actually exists. Okay. So if result like that, if we get a result, let's check if the password is correct as well. Okay. 